Hi friends, my name is Al or Lil Star Nerd and welcome to today's episode of finally understanding the definition of being a hands-on learner. Seriously, the fact that I went this whole time thinking watching YouTube tutorials would help me without ever realizing that it all sounded like gibberish to me was because I'm a tactile person? Before we get started, I just want to give a little shout out to the podcast that me and Kelsey Rodriguez have started. It's called Make Art Don't Starve. It has its own YouTube channel. You can also find it on like Spotify and Google Play. Uh, so go, go check it out. Go give us a watch. We're having a great time uh, and we're having really great conversations. Here's a clip if you're interested. Al, I reached out to you a couple of months ago just to like make another art YouTuber friend. And now we're starting a podcast. <laughs> Pretty yeah. crazy. It is crazy. Time this week was supposed to be a vlog, but obviously it's not. I'll talk a bit more about that later, but for now, let's talk about what this week's video is. Since 2021's New Year's resolutions video, I've been saying I want to get into oil painting. I painted exactly one oil painting sometime in high school under the guidance of my art teacher and then lost half my oil supplies and never dared to try another piece. And then I started getting more into classic art and obviously oil is like the classic medium. So of course I was tempted, I was curious. And since then, I've made a feeble attempt or two on my channel. I've taken the Evolve course on oil painting basics, and I've started a few of my own oil paintings that I may or may not be staring at unfinished on my floor right now. They are never getting finished. Uh, it's not gonna happen. I kept thinking I was getting the hang of oils. I kept researching more and more and hearing more and more advice. And then I would feel like confident enough to take a stab at it. And I, I would feel so overwhelmed and confused and like frustrated. And eventually I would just like give up on each piece that I tried. But I have not given up completely. I still talk about wanting to get better at oils and guess who heard me talk about it? Grumbacher, yeah. Grum Grumbacher. Uh, they reached out to me on Instagram, I think like way back in like December. And they, they heard me talk about how I really wanted to try the Zorn palette. So they sent me some oil supplies to assist me in that endeavor. And then I never did anything with them. <laughs> they sent me paints and I just, I sat them aside. I felt so bad. I feel so bad. But I, I just got so busy this year. It's been a weird year for me. And, and oil painting, it always just seems like such a huge project. Like it, it's gonna take time and like effort and energy. So I kept putting it off and putting it off until now. I have finally done it. I can finally stop feeling bad about ignoring Grumbacher. <laughs> I'm sorry, Grumbacher. So there's a few things I wanna talk about in this video. It's probably gonna be structured a bit weird just cause I didn't like know <laughs> what I was filming for until like halfway through the piece. But uh, I, bear with me, I guess, please. I'm trying my best. It's been a, I've been messy this year. I'm doing my best. First of all, let's really quickly talk about Zorn and my initial like thought and painting process. I personally discovered Zorn and the famous Zorn palette back when I was looking for Skillshare classes on oil painting back in, I think, early 2021, 20, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I absolutely fell in love with his paintings, the concept of the palette, the challenging aspect to it. But I definitely was not prepared for that at the time. And so I told myself, you know, I'll get to it later. I'll, I'll try it some other time. If you've never heard of Anders Zorn, he's a famous Swedish painter from the late 1800s to early 1900s, and he's really well known for his specific palette of only four colors, vermilion, ivory black, flake or titanium white, depending on the source, and yellow ochre. I'm recreating the piece Emma Zorn reading, and as you saw, uh, I used the grid method with pencil on a gessoed canvas to get myself started. So off the bat, I was already going, not necessarily in the wrong direction, but I was already a little shaken <laughs> because I realized that I actually didn't have vermilion. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure I do. I could have sworn I had vermilion. I think Ver Grumbacher sent it to me, but I could not for the life of me find it in my pile of oil paints. For some reason, I was not willing to look for it. I didn't want to mess up my rainbow order of twos. <laughs> so I went with Cad Red. I think it was Light Hue, I'm pretty sure. I was really worried that that would throw things off, but honestly, I love the color and I'm not too sure that there would have been much difference. Um, and actually when researching it, Cad Red Light is often used as a substitute. So we're good. But at the time I did not know that and I was a bit worried it did throw me off. Okay, so I feel like I had way too much 
theoretical knowledge about oil painting. And my brain was so oversaturated with this knowledge that I didn't know how to put any of it to use, especially because every single source I looked into told me to do it a different way, which is super confusing. <laughs> So I decided instead of trying to do it right and the way I was told to do it, I was just I was just going to do it um, in whatever way that made sense to me, which is how I've learned how to do basically everything else with art. I have some theoretical knowledge and then I, I jump in and I do it really badly until I figure out exactly you know, how it works for me, you know? So that's what I, that's what I did here. But anyways, that's what I did. I had a setup that just worked intuitively for me instead of worrying about doing things, you know, right or wrong. Um, and because of that, I, I definitely was not using proper techniques. I was not really treating my brushes properly, I'm assuming. Um, I was not mixing paint properly. <laughs> and therefore, I will not show you guys any of that stuff. <laughs> You are only going to see like the brush putting paint on canvas. I am not going to show you anything else because truly, I, tr I truly, I do not want to be yelled at. I personally think that there are no rules with art. Uh, and as long as you have a product you're happy with, who really cares how you got there. So I don't feel bad about it, but I, I still don't want to be yelled at. <laughs> I don't want to be yelled at. So you're not going to see any of that. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, um, this is like, I consider this my first real, fully completed, full effort oil piece, essentially since my first ever oil painting in high school. I've made some half-hearted attempts and I've done some different exercises between now and then that have like fully covered a canvas, but I don't think I would be lying in saying that this is my first real oil painting in a long, long time. So I was, I was pretty nervous to start. Uh, I have been having issues with my other attempts that made me really question if I would be able to do this piece. I started a piece a while ago that literally took months, like I'm not exaggerating, months to dry. And it really confused me and stressed me out. And I, I just, I was not prepared for that. Um, I was having difficulties cleaning the brushes and kind of figuring out proper brush etiquette and like a painting setup. I was just, I was unsure about what I should even like be using, you know, like brush cleaners and paint thinners and solvents. Uh, so I was, I was nervous to start. I was unsure. My confidence was shaken. I, I did not know what to do, but I had to bite the bullet eventually. And I went for a method that actually worked really well for me, uh, which again, I won't tell you what it was because I don't feel like getting yelled at or maybe not even yelled at. I just like it worked and I don't want anyone to tell me that it was wrong and that I shouldn't do it because it worked and I don't want to get rid of that. <laughs> also, I, I think now is a good time to say um, if you want to leave a comment offering oil painting advice, please do. That's totally fine. I will appreciate it. And I'm sure other people who are looking for advice will appreciate it. But um, just know that I likely will not take it. <laughs> I'm going to talk about some issues I came across in this piece, and I've already talked about some issues I've had, um, and you probably some of you will know a solution for, but I'm, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but I'm going to be honest. I don't want help at this point. I feel like receiving so much information from others is really what made oil feel so difficult for me. And not that it wasn't helpful. Like I've had one-on-one -on -one discussions with people. I've had classes and then they were all so super helpful. They made me feel really confident, but I've realized that the way I learn, like just hearing a lot of advice, like is not helpful. I feel like receiving so much information from others is really what made oil painting feel so difficult for me because it was so mental. And I think at this point I'm ready to just like figure it out by myself by trial and error. Do you know what I mean? Like not, I don't want to be like, no one's allowed to tell me what to do, but like, I just feel like, like, even if you give really good advice, I'm not going to take it just cause like I, I finally found something that worked and I don't want to risk losing that even if it makes my life a little bit harder by not taking advice. Like if I need help, I'll ask like specific questions, but like for now, like I finally figured out how to make oils bearable and I can work on it from there. You know what I mean? Like I'll, I'll probably have questions at some point. I, I don't want to sound like rude. Just like, do you know when you, when you get to that point where it's like, okay, I got it. I got it. No one even look at me or you're going to ruin this for me. Like I finally made something work and I don't want to jinx it. Like I'm in that mode with oils. And I'm, I'm afraid that if I try anything slightly different, I'm going to lose the spark. <laughs> Anyways, I started by just following my gut and doing what made sense in my head. And it, it actually went really, really smoothly. Uh, on my first of three days, I just put down a pretty thin layer of paint, doing a bit more than just blocking in color. I covered the entire canvas and then eventually hit a point where I couldn't 
do much more. Working with oil generally means working wet on wet, which is great, but I was kind of reaching this point where I couldn't make many changes to the piece because all the paint was just mixing and getting really muddy. So I stopped for the day and I gave it some time to dry. I was really anxious about that because I had a hopeful deadline for this piece, but my previous experience with oils told me that I might have to wait months for the paint to dry. So I figured I would just give it a few days and hope that by the time I came back, it would at least be a little bit tacky or something. Uh, and to my surprise, it was almost totally dry when I came back. So then I started my second pass, which I honestly might have been able to finish the piece on that second day of work if I just hadn't gotten bored of doing it. Okay, hi. I didn't record any footage of myself before I started on this painting. Um, I'm assuming I put a voiceover over the first half, but I wanted to do a check-in. Um, I won't talk too much about the painting because I'm assuming that will be in the voiceover, um, but it's going good. I'd say I'm probably officially halfway or more than halfway done, which is good. <laughs> All I really have left to do is I want to solidify the background. I'm not going to go super detailed. Like it's basically there. <laughs> I just need to make it less like patchy. Uh, I need to do her shirt, which again is not going to be super detailed. Um, and then I want to add a bit more of this red to her face, like especially in the cheeks. And then I need to add like the shadows contrast. I need to fix up her hair a little bit and I need to do the same with the hand, but like the base is there for all her skin. The newspaper is done. It just needs highlights. But yeah, I'll save my thoughts for like how it's going and like the Zorn palette and stuff for like the voiceover. Um, I thought I would talk a bit about like life updates slash like this video type stuff. So it's nearly the end of March um, and this, this video was supposed to be the March vlog. It's probably not going to be a vlog at all. I have footage of a sketchbook gouache quick painting and then maybe like another low effort sketchbook page. And then I have about two clips of me going to the beach yesterday. And I think that's it. Like, I think I have footage of like a sunset and that's like about it. Not much vlog footage. And there's like a week left of this month. Just nothing has been happening. Like I've just been in such, I keep talking about this, but the past two months have just been so weird for me. My sleep schedule has been super messed up. It's seriously taking like a toll on me, like all around. Um, I had midterm sneak up on me. So I lost a week. I couldn't even upload a video that week. There's been some like personal stuff going on, like doctor's appointments and also just trying to line my schedule up with other people's and uh, like trying to do other projects and so much has been happening and like I, I don't know, just I've been super disorganized. But I think I've been a little bit less motivated and excited to do art. Uh, I've been enjoying like my other hobbies. Um, I've been like playing Stardew Valley and Red Dead, which I still suck at. And I've also been taking the time as the weather here in Florida is getting warmer and it's feeling a bit more like summer every day. I've been taking the time to just like fall in love with life again, eating a lot of like fresh fruits and vegetables and like spending time outside and going on bike rides again. So my priorities have just been a little bit shifted and more worried about like myself and my emotional health rather than worrying about like what I can and cannot control on the channel. So. Things have been a little bit weird. <laughs> and as a result, this video is not really what I wanted it to be. This whole month has not really been what I wanted it to be in terms of the content that I'm putting out, but that's okay. And so instead of a vlog, we're gonna mainly be talking about Zorn. <laughs> I really genuinely enjoyed doing this piece. I wasn't sure I would. I was always a bit worried that maybe oils just like weren't for me. I see a lot of art memes that are like, you either like acrylics or, or oil, so you can't like both. And I, I like acrylic, so you know, do the math, right? <laughs> but this piece just went so, so smoothly. It only took me three days, maybe max a combined 12 hours with no major mistakes, hiccups, road bumps. It was great, it was a great time. First, let me talk about oil paints in general. I had a much, much easier time with them this time. There were no issues like I've had previously. A huge part of being scared of them came from my lack of understanding about mixing paints and like how to deal with like any of that side of it. I simplified the whole aspect to it, which made my time much, much more pleasant. And without all these things really intimidating me about oils, I could just like, like use them. Like without all this insane prep and worrying about all these rules and stressing the whole time, like I just had fun. I just used the paints and I enjoyed it. I really liked using them. I had the whole acrylic to oil epiphany all over again of being so shocked to see how far like a tiny bit of paint stretches and the revelation of being able to blend and enjoying like the soft butteriness of the paints. And, and also of having fumes hit me like a truck when I came back into my room after a snack breaks. 
I will say like one of the major appeals to oils is being able to work wet on wet and like being able to blend, right? Like obviously, uh, and coming from acrylics, that's like insane. It makes a huge difference, but also coming from acrylics, that's insane. <laughs> like it is so different. And my mind was not in the mode of being able to blend. So I would put down paint thinking like it would layer and be opaque and cover up what's beneath it. But instead it would just become like a muddy smudge and I'd have to like panic to clean it up. So that definitely took some getting used to, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't really transfer my acrylic methods to this piece, which it was a transition period for sure. Now let's talk about specifically using the Zorn palette. Uh, it, it was fun. It was a fun, cool challenge. I definitely intend to do it again. There are multiple Zorn pieces that I'm absolutely head over heels for that I want to recreate. Most of them featuring that gorgeous red. There are some major pros, but I do have like some, and not necessarily negative thoughts, just like, I don't know that it was like profoundly good type thing. Because one of my concerns with oils was dealing with mixing the colors, dealing with all the paint tubes, the messiness, the fact that I wasn't sure about what I was doing, um, what kind of like solvents or whatever I had to use to mix the paints, narrowing down my palette to four tubes really helped to minimize that issue, like a lot. So the limited palette took away like a hugely intimidating aspect of oil painting for me. It also helped with the ease of like the actual painting. If you guys saw my video from a few months ago where I did the painting of the fisherman and the siren in acrylic, one of the major issues I had was painting the skin. For the siren especially, she was really pale. Anytime I wanted to add even a speck of paint to her skin, I had to basically repaint the entire piece because I could never get the colors exactly right. But when you only have four colors to mix, it's kind of hard to not get the right skin color, you know? So even after this painting had fully dried and I started working on the next layer, I still didn't have issues blending it into the skin tone because remixing the color was so easy. And also, I just really enjoy working with limited color palettes. There's this kind of challenge aspect to it, which just kind of like spices up your painting experience. It feels more impressive to be like, I did this whole painting with only four colors. But at the same time, it really is a genius color palette. So only having those four colors isn't too limiting once you've accepted that there are certain colors you won't be able to achieve. So overall, really positive experience working with the Zorn palette. It wasn't nearly as hard as I thought it'd be. In fact, I would argue that it simplified things and made the process easier for me. So yeah, I would definitely recommend people try it out. On the flip side, I am a bit skeptical. There are plenty of possible explanations to this. I haven't done any research into the actual palette or its use or its history um, beyond looking up what colors it has. So I don't know like anything about it. I could be missing something very obvious here. It might also just be like the quality of my paints or my lack of experience and ability. Who knows? Not me. <laughs> but basically, I'm pretty sure that the famed Zorn palette was not used, at least not for this specific piece, at the very least not the whole time while this piece was being made. There are some colors that like there's no physical way I could have reproduced with those, with my four color palette. Like on the ring, there was an emerald green that I, there, there's no way. I definitely could not make that. I also struggled throughout the entire time painting the skin because I really wanted to replicate this beautiful, vibrant, like orangey peach. There were very bright yellows, but I, I couldn't. I could get a lot of pastels and a lot of like dark, vibrant colors, like straight from the tube, but I couldn't get these, lighter, vibrant colors. My yellows were always very, very ochre -y. I couldn't get them to feel any lighter or like airier, like the, like the original piece. Like it was kind of like a lemon yellow and I could not get that. I would try to mix these colors um, and I found that my red was pretty much only like red, like red <laughs> when it wasn't mixed with anything. Like it had this gorgeous punch and vibrancy to it. But the second it so much as touched another color, it lost all of that. It became very pink when mixed with white. Like the white really, really knocked out a lot of the saturation, like no duh. But like I couldn't, I couldn't get like a light red. I could only get a really nice pink. I also couldn't get a proper orange. Again, it might be the quality of my paints, but I feel like maybe there were just some other colors used to be able to achieve these really pretty colors. <laughs> Um, also, I should mention, I think I used at least one tube of my great uncle's paint, so it was old. Maybe that had to do with it. Um, but yeah, I was just kind of frustrated with that aspect. 
You know, there were there were yellow undertones that I, I couldn't achieve because the yellow ochre when mixed with white would be like kind of this yellowy gray, not really the lemon yellow I wanted. So it took me a while to kind of just accept that I would have to do my best interpretation of these colors rather than recreate them, which I had really wanted to do because I thought these colors were so gorgeous. But that, that definitely gave me some trouble for a while and I would keep kind of trying to attempt throughout the entire piece, but at some point I just had to accept like it's not, it's not gonna happen. We won't get into technical color theory too much, but this palette, Okay, so like the idea is you still have every color with this palette. The ivory black works as your blue. It's a very cool blue when mixed with like white. It's like a very gray, gray blue. The yellow ochre has some green undertones. You mix that with your black to get a green. So theoretically, you've got it all there. So theoretically, you've got it all there. However, I definitely struggle to achieve some of those colors. Um, like if you look it up, there's a lot of like color wheels that show you everything, all the colors that you can achieve. Um, I couldn't get those colors. I found myself thinking if I just like added a cad yellow in that palette or maybe an ultramarine, like I'd be golden, I'd be perfect. But then, you know, like that, that kind of defeats the purpose of the Zorn palette. But overall, I really enjoyed using the palette and I think I learned a lot about oil painting and possible future palettes for myself, which has been something that I've been thinking about since my siren painting. And I definitely wanna give this another go because like I said, overall, just a positive experience and it made me feel way better about oils. Although I'll probably still avoid them just because at this point it's habit. At this point it is habit to avoid oils like the plague. <laughs> If you're wondering if you should try out the Zorn palette, this is your sign to just do it. When I first heard about it, I thought like, wow, that must be really hard. That's like for really good experienced oil painters. It seems really intimidating when you don't know anything about the medium, right? Like imagine if I told you to do a full piece with only four markers or four colored pencils, it would be awful. It would suck. But honestly, I think the Zorn palette actually works for a great introduction to oils. It really narrows down things that you have to focus on. You have a wide enough range of colors to work with without getting overwhelmed. And technically you're not being denied any of the colors you might need. Yeah, maybe just start with primaries in black and white. <laughs> like that's also an option. But honestly, the Zorn palette, it's just like fun and interesting. <laughs> I think if you're looking to ease into oil painting, but it seems like a lot of work and seems really overwhelming, using a limited palette like this really helps to ease that load. And if you're already into oil painting, I still think it's a great idea to try the, out the Zorn palette. Like, just try it out. For people who have better supplies and are better at mixing paints and color theory, I can see it being a really fun challenge to see all the things that you can do with such limited colors. And finally, I want to touch on the final piece. I always feel a bit weird about praising myself for just, like, directly copying something because... Like, I don't know, it feels like it wasn't, like, me. Like, I didn't really do any work here. But I will say it turned out way better than I thought it would, especially because I couldn't get some of those colors I really wanted to get. I definitely had help with the grid sketch, which by the way, some of the grid lines actually showed through the painting, but oh well, I'm not worried about it. But I think I definitely captured like the vibes and the main things that I wanted to. So overall, I'm happy with how this turned out. I just have to figure out what to do with it now. <laughs> All right, that's it, friends. Thank you so much for sticking with me. If you enjoy the video, let me know by interacting in literally any way so I don't cry myself to sleep. All right, go watch a movie, drink some water, and go do some art.